Last week, we worked step-by-step -step through how to shoot one of our signature portraits, bringing us to this RAW file. This week, we're gonna take that RAW file and from scratch, we're gonna use Lightroom Classic. I'm gonna walk you through how to create the final color and black and white versions. My name is Pi, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. Hello, my friends. My name is Pi. Welcome to Adorama TV. I'm laughing because I've said that line like 15 times now. Hello, 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 hello. What's up, friends? What's up, my friends? <laughs> So look, we are inside of Lightroom Classic. I have here the raw file pulled up. This image we created last week. In fact, I gave you all a 10 step breakdown on how you can create this image. This image is one of our signature portraits for Lynn and Jersa photography, meaning a lot of our clients come to us and go, I really want that image. You know where the water looks all like wispy and washy and that kind of, and we're like, oh, the environmental shutter drag. That's what we call it. Anyway, we walked through how to create it. And if you want to check out that video, if you haven't seen it already, I'd highly recommend it because this is part two where you're going to pause the video now. Well, not now, but like after I say this, download the exercise file because I have the raw file ready for you to download and then load it into Lightroom. When you got it in, go ahead and resume the video. So now this is when you're resuming the video. Okay, so this is what the raw file looks like straight out of camera. We have all or most of the dynamic range. I think I could have gone like one stop darker a little bit on this just to get more of those highlights, but we got most of our dynamic range in here and we need to now kind of lift it out. And what we're gonna be aiming for is a final color version like this and a final black and white like this one. Now, if you are a Visual Flow preset user, then you can simply get there by selecting from the Crush Pack, HDR Natural, and this is from the black and white mixer. It's the HDR portraits. They're pretty much one click and done. But I promised from scratch, ground up, and that's what we're doing. So look, let's grab the raw file. I'm gonna reset this out uh, and go ahead and press Control apostrophe or Command apostrophe to create a virtual copy. And let's start with the color version of this. I always like to start in color first. I'm going to go ahead and just fix my horizon line by pressing R and let's just correct that a tiny, tiny bit. I have a hard time seeing straight on some of these horizons. That's my own eyes. So look, I'm gonna do things a bit different this go. I wanna show you kind of a different way of editing here. And you might not have known that dehaze is actually gonna add a lot of blues to your image. Check this out. So dehaze, when we go back, it's gonna add almost like this fog to an image, right? But when you take it up, the first notch kind of adds a bit of contrast. But as you take this up to 40, you start seeing a lot of blues. As we go up to 60, you see even more and you start seeing even more blues as we go up. So how can we use this to our advantage when we're dealing with like say, environmental portraits? What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to get dehaze up to about plus 40. Then I'm gonna come up here to my base tones. See, I'm gonna use dehaze to add a lot of color back into the shot, and then we're gonna kind of correct our way out of it to make sure skin tones look good, because if you don't, it looks like boop, like that. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna bring the exposure up a little. In fact, we can bring it up to about, you know what? Let's undo that for one sec because I'm actually gonna bring my shadows and my blacks up first. You can do this in kind of whatever order you want, but I'm just realizing that like, if I start tweaking my exposure first, then I'm probably gonna have quite a bit of stuff to do uh, on the base tones. Okay, so I'm bringing the whites down a bit. I'm gonna bring the shadows up a bit. Essentially, I'm creating uh, an HDR look to the image, right? Where I'm, I'm bringing out all the detail. You'll notice that this flattens the image quite a bit. Like we lost a lot of our overall contrast and that's okay because what I'm gonna do down here before I even touch exposure and contrast, I'm gonna add contrast via the tone curve. So we're gonna add some brightness by pulling up. This is roughly on that top one third line. I'm pulling up, make sure by the way that you've selected the point curve right here and you're not in the parametric curve over here. Okay, those are actually independent curves. Then I'm gonna pull down on the shadow side and I can choose exactly how much shadow I want to add. So for example, I'm gonna bring this down on the base side. I don't even know what that word is. Just on the, on the lower side of this tone curve and the deep side of the shadows, the deep end. And then I'm gonna lift, we're still in the shadows, but I'm not quite in the black. So I would classify this more like in the blacks. Here we're more just in the shadows and I'm lifting the shadows 
a bit. We're leaving the midtones. Notice like the midtones are kind of pulled up. This is adding a good amount of exposure to an image or to this image. So I'm not even touching exposure yet. Side note, this is actually how we build all of our Visual Flow presets. We have a very um, important structure that we follow to create presets that actually work across the board and they work without touching exposure and contrast. I'd recommend you do the same thing. Build your presets with exposure and contrast built into your tone curve. So that way the actual exposure and contrast sliders you leave for your, yourself to be able to customize as you apply the preset to each image, right? So this is actually looking pretty decent now. So we have this tone curve that's boosting overall contrast. One thing that I'd recommend when you're creating your own looks, make sure that your tone curve is smooth, meaning we don't want like rough bumps right here. This is gonna create posterization or this unnatural graduation in color tones. So as much as possible, we wanna create this like graduating tone between each of these different points so that the movements are, are subtle and the tonal transitions are, are gradual, okay? Now, we've done a good job of correcting this out. Um, let's look at the overall white balance and just see, I'm not gonna add split toning to this image. What I am gonna do now is brighten a little. I think the overall color looks pretty decent. I might just add a little bit more greens to the image because they look a little bit on the pink side. Maybe that's just the dress throwing my, my eyes off. I don't know. Looks about right though. Let's go ahead now and bring a little bit of clarity into it. Now, I wouldn't necessarily touch vibrance and saturation for the same reasons as before. I kind of want to control those independently down here. And what I'm gonna do specifically is we're gonna go to luminance. We're gonna pull down the blues a bit, okay? So bring it down to like maybe negative 30. I'm gonna bring down the aquas and the purples just in case there's any in that range. Oranges we want to be careful with because oranges might be sand, but it's also going to be skin tone. So you'll notice that you're affecting the skin tone quite a bit. What I like to do on the oranges and the reds a little bit is when I have an environmental portrait, I'll actually raise it a little. This will actually boost skin tones up a bit in the shot. I say a bit, a lot. It's a hazard. Like my dad jokes, those are a hazard too. If you want the blues to be more or less saturated, you can pump that up or down here. That's totally fine. I'm going to leave it actually where it's at. I'm not even gonna add a color gray on this image. I think it looks pretty decent as is. What I might do is add a little bit more warmth just for skin tone, because now that I'm looking at it, I do feel like skin tone's getting a little bit on the uh, blue side. Then again, I do like very warm looks to my images. Okay, so this is pretty solid right now. What we're gonna do now is add a radial filter. Now, look, I have this burn brush, right? The burn brush is literally just a negative 0.5 exposure set. I like to pull this out from the center of my images or wherever the couples are. And because I do this a lot, I've actually set up a preset inside of Visual Flow Tools that does this. You don't need Visual Flow Tools. I mean, get them if you want them. But what I'm saying is set up your own preset like this because that radial filter is gonna drop right in and now I can simply move the pin where I want, save myself a couple steps of having to do that manually each time. So what I'm gonna do here now is start pulling down an exposure. We can do this by holding shift and dropping the slider. So I'm just pressing down or up to kind of move it in bigger increments, binger. And then I can also hold down alter option. I can drag the slider to incrementally move everything. So I'm gonna bring it down to about negative 1.4. Then I'm gonna use a graduated filter. Let's pull down a little bit more. Okay. I'm gonna even pull up from the bottom to kind of get those tones to kind of get a little bit dark on the bottom side and sweep up and into them. Now, this part is gonna be a bit wacky, not really. What I'm gonna do actually is just go back to this radial filter and you can do this two different ways. If you want more control over this, because keep in mind that I do have my feather set to 100, meaning the graduation of this effect, right, of this negative 1.4, it's dropping in. See, if I don't have any feather, this is what it looks like and please, please don't do images like that. But with this feather set to 100, that graduation is very gradual, but it drops all the way into where my couple is. So if I start making adjustments like to temperature, notice that it actually extends into the couple. So how could I do this and make it uniform, but without affecting the couple? There's a few different ways. I could create a new graduated filter. So if I create a new one, uh, a new radial graduate filter, and then I simply set this to, I'm gonna just reset the burn and I'm gonna drop exposure. I can use my feather now to kind of control where it's gonna drop into, right? This looks pretty cool. 
I actually like this a lot, but the thing is, I, I kind of want to make this uniform in a certain way. Meaning, look at the image. The image has these nice orange tones that get cast like right across this section of the water. Then it kind of shifts more to blue tones. And then down here, it shifts more to orange tones. So what I could actually do is sort of follow the existing colors as I paint this in. Let's try this with a graduated filter set to a very special mask. I think a lot of you know what I'm talking about. So what we're going to do is set up a graduated filter. We're going to hold down shift, drop it in from the top and drag down. I'm basically dragging all the way to the point of this spot. This is kind of where I start seeing the blues get subtracted out of the image, right? And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go to exposure and reset it. We're going to go to temperature. I'm going to drop it by like maybe negative. Let's start it at negative 30. And if we want to back it off, we can. Because what I'm going to do is go to the range mask and set this to color. I only want this to apply where the tones fall into the range of the clouds. Did you guys just see that? That's like magic. I just selected the clouds, which are already blue. And now we get a range mask that sets this application of temperature only to where the image is already blue. Yeah, I hope that kind of blew your mind. So look at this. So now I can bring this to say negative 20 or negative 30. I can bring it anywhere. I can also play with the amount. So as I play with the amount, it's going to dial the way that it's going to feather and control the effect. So over here on the left side, I don't feel like it's super natural in the way that it graduates. I'm actually going to pull it up more towards the right side. Then I'm going to come up here to temperature and we're going to play a bit. I'm going to leave it at negative 20. I like it a bit more on the subtle side here. Now let's raise the exposure a little bit more. And if you want, by the way, like if you don't want it to affect his shirt, right? See how his shirt's also blue. So look, I'm going to grab that same pin, make sure that you have the same one selected, but we can also jump over to the brush, hold down alter option, and you can just simply click on them to paint it off. Now, if it's kind of affecting everything around them, you do want to get a little bit more precise about it. So when you paint it off, kind of get in there. Now you're painting it off the shirt, anything over here, kind of go down and you can subtract it off their person and anything else that you feel like got hit with it. Okay, this looks pretty darn good. So look, we started from here. We got to here. I like it. I might add in a little more clarity. And let me show you one other thing that you might dig a bit. I can actually bring up my temperature a little bit more too. Now I'm going to, this is where I get to my final step. I'll start adjusting contrast, right? So I leave contrast zeroed out so that I can get it to the last step and then go, okay, now I want a little bit of extra oomph and I haven't already taken contrast all the way up. I can use it just for those final finishing touches. So let's do two things. Number one, uh, for this image, I'm just going to do one brush and you guys can save this out. So in the visual flow retouching toolkit, we get the tools that come over on this side. On the right side, we get this collection of retouching tools. Uh, it's okay if again, you don't have it. I just want you to pause the video, dial in this setting. You guys can save it. Notice that I've named it Sky and Clouds because this is what makes your sky and clouds pop. Okay, so we're going to go and just paint this right over. Okay, I'm going to hold Alter Option. I'm going to do a subtle feather. Watch this. I'm going to increase the size by using my mouse wheel. And I'm just going to feather it off the entire bottom. So we kind of get a, a graduating effect to it. And if you're, you know, not a dummy like myself, you could have just done that all in one swoop just with a graduate filter. Sometimes I don't know what I'm doing. It happens, you know, happens to me quite often, actually. So I'm just going to pull it up to about here. So we get this nice subtle graduation. Notice that once again, I can hold down alter option. I can click and drag left to decrease or right to increase. This will strengthen or reduce everything incrementally so I can get it exactly where I want it. That looks really nice. Okay. So from here, let's go ahead and press control apostrophe. And by the way, you can go as I, I kind of made this a little bit over the top, but you can make it more natural, whatever. One nice little handy dandy tool if you want to keep it more on the natural side. Again, if you haven't touched vibrance or saturation, you can use these at this point to just bring it more to a subtle side. So look, vibrance pulled down a little bit. We get a far more natural kind of vibe to it. You can even pull down saturation and vibrance a little bit and then add a bit of warmth. It It's a very quick and easy way of shifting tones to something that's a bit more natural. But you know what? I liked it where it was at, so I'm going to take it back there. So you'll be like, I like the before better. The before. Look, if you like 
this before better than this, I don't know what to say to you. I know there's quite a few of you out there. I just, I got nothing for you, okay? That's it. That's all I got. But I really like the before. Okay, so I've now made a virtual copy of the color version, and that's this. So again, if you forgot, control apostrophe to create that, right? Now press V. We're going to shift this to a black and white. There's several things that I love doing when it comes to black and whites. Number one, I have more control now over the uh, exposure and stuff. So I usually like to take my exposure down a bit, and I'll actually start pumping my whites up a bit. Okay. This naturally brings out the water and the detail and kind of the clouds and stuff. And you can balance this where you can pull the highlights down and actually bring the white point up and get this really great sort of look to it. I'm going to now raise blacks and I'm going to raise shadows. Shadows is primarily where their skin tone is residing. I'm also going to drop contrast a bit. And now we get to this really nice spot here, right? If I zoom in and look at their skin tone, it should be fine. Yep, they're nice. They're bright. Looks good. With everything on this side, I can actually exaggerate because for some reason, I mean, that's not some reason, it's just black and whites. So everything looks better exaggerated. So I'm going to go to each of these different brushes here. Um, I don't want, I believe one of these brushes was like a color brush. I don't want to do that on my image, but I'm going to exaggerate everything else. Okay, this one's fine. Let's see what we had down here. This one's the negative 20 temperature. We don't need that anymore. Okay, leave that, or I'll just delete this one. So make sure that none of your brushes are actually affecting temperature. Let's do the same thing on this side. Make sure none of these brushes are affecting temperature. We're good. Okay, because now what I will do is actually cool down the image. If I were to flip this back to color, watch what happens. Okay, so I'm going to press V just to get this back to color. And notice that as I bring the temperature down, I get more blues, right? So leaving their skin tone still in the oranges, I'm going to flip this back to black and white. Now I'm going to come down and go to my black and white mix. And now I can have more control over blues. Am I blowing your mind yet? I hope so. This is some good stuff. Side note, if you guys like the way that I teach, this is literally what the entire SLR Lounge library is from A to Z, every aspect of shooting, working with clients, editing, it's all there so you can train yourself on how to run an entire business you can also use it to train your shooters it's everything that we use it's our entire operating manual for lineages photography so that is my shameless plug that i will say for this episode um, but this is looking good a couple things that i want to adjust now number one as the sky starts getting darker notice that we do have some dust on here i think this is probably sensor dust which we have to fix number two the shadows especially on us Middle Eastern folks, you know, we have the deep set eyes. So with our deep set eyes, we tend to uh, lose those eyes deep into the shadows, especially when you're putting in a lot of dehaze. It's the dehaze that's really contributing to that, right? So the way that we can get rid of it and the way you can kind of bring their skin tone back is what I call this, um, well, specifically here is a decrush skin, but it's negative dehaze. So you can just paint this in right over the faces. And again, if you're not using visual flow, what's wrong with you? I'm just kidding. Pause the video, dial it in. You guys have the settings. Okay. I'm going to apply this to actually the hair too, because it tends to crush tends to make the hair go really, really dark. Okay. So with this, you can kind of lift their skin tones back out. And this is something I like to do. Anytime I, anytime I take my images toward this, like really dramatic look, I'll always use this dehaze or this uh, decrush setting to kind of bring the skin tones back. Can't forget the leg. You know, one of the things that I often notice in like editing, um, the easiest way for me to tell like something's edited is when people forget like skin tones away from the face. So like you'll see the face is edited, but nothing else is, uh, is adjusted. So just remember to get the faces. Okay, so this looks awesome. Now, do I wanna do anything else? I actually really like the way it looks. I'm going to show you one other thing before we go and remove those little spots. If I go down to water and ocean, notice what this is. This is a brush that basically bumps the highlights in water. Now it has a color applied to it. So I'm just going to remove the color from this, but essentially all it's doing is adding highlights and whites to an image. So let's delete this and create our own, right? All I'm going to do is let's just get back to a basic setting and let's just pull whites up. So anytime this sees a highlight, 
it's going to pull that highlight up. It's one of my favorite things to do on water and anything, like you can do this on a wedding dress, you can do this on really anything, and it's gonna pull the whites up and give you this nice bit of contrast. Now just remember, as you get towards the horizon line, use the Alt uh, option to kind of select an eraser brush and minus it out. I like to minus it out so it doesn't drop into the horizon. I like to also minus it out in these areas as it kind of comes into the frame. Keep it on the, on the more subtle side, and you can always adjust this up or down from there. So I'm gonna bring it down to make this a little bit more subtle. But that's it, folks. We have our final color and black and white variants of these. Oh, I almost forgot. Let's uh, fix that dust. Okay, I'm going to select both these images, get back to the develop module and check this out. We're going to select the spot removal tool or press Q. Um, notice that my image goes wonky. If you press T to bring up your toolbar, you're going to notice this visualize spot function. If you select that, you can actually drag this to the left and right to actually see some of those spots. So for stuff like this in the clouds, it's a little bit difficult to see. Sometimes you see it better in color. And what I'll sometimes do is just exaggerate. So take dehaze, for example. Um, let's do it this way. Let's select one of these images, take dehaze all the way up, uh, and, and it'll kind of exaggerate the effect, right? So you can see it now very clearly. So we're just going to go and drop this right here. Okay, hopefully Lightroom. I love when Lightroom like it's like, oh, you wanted me to sample from this area. And it like jumps six miles away to a face. And you're like, no, that wasn't even close. There you go, Lightroom, that one's better. Okay, so I'm just gonna fix each of these. I gotta get my, you know the R5, anything mirrorless, gotta be really careful turning off the camera when you're swapping out lenses. Cause uh, that sensor is on. I've only done it a few times where I've forgotten and I already got dust on it. Okay. This part isn't like super fun to watch, so I'm gonna get it kind of rough, rough lack. All right, now if I bring this back to 40 where it was, it looks fine. What you're gonna do now is press Control Shift C or Command Shift C. This goes to like check none and select spot removal only, and then select this image and press Control Shift V or Command Shift V. It'll paste it in and you've got your spots removed on both images, even though we did that last. The other option is to kind of do it first, then create your virtual copy, but we didn't do it in that order. There you have it, folks. There is our final color image, and here is our final black and white image. Let's just look and see. This is how far we've come from the comparison of the raw file to the final color, and then the raw file to the final black and white. Super fun. I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial series. If you did, I'd love for you to give me a thumbs up on the video. That helps me a lot as a creator for Adorama TV. And you can also help the Adorama TV channel by subscribing. And if you want to be notified of when videos come out, turn on notifications. Kind of funny that we have to do that, but yeah, subscribe and then turn on notifications. Meantime, take these techniques, go out, use them, have fun, make them your own, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.